Honorable Minister Smriti Rani ji, Vivek Agniotri ji, friends, it's an honor to be here today at the launch of this extremely important book. Now, I'm a student of literature, and uh, one of the most impressive things about this book, among the many, many impressive things, is that Vivek ji has given the English language a new word, or rather a new phrase, urban naxals. So it's only very great writers, thinkers, poets who can change the nature of language itself, you know. So he's not only given a new word to the English language, but also a new concept. Because behind this book is the idea that when we think about Naxalisms, Mao Maoist insurgency, we think about people in remote parts of India fighting with guns and uh, extremely violent they are. There's a, whole statistical analysis of how many people have died in this Maoist violence, the corridors, you know, right from Nepal down to Telangana and so forth. But I think what the book is trying to show is that those, so to speak, foot soldiers in the deep jungles of India are supported by a massive ecosystem which has spread its tentacles all over India. So urban Naxals at one level is the story of uncovering that nexus, you know, and therefore this new word and new concept given to our vocabulary also is extremely important for the kind of nation we want to build today, uh, which I'm going to come back to in a few moments. But I regard the book to be a triple triumph. Why do I say that? On the one hand, it is the story of the undying resilience of the human spirit, surviving against all odds. It's an inspirational book. It's about one man's struggle and fight against odds, all odds, and against failures. He calls himself a manglik, you know? You read the book, that he's failed so many times, he's like a manglik in Bollywood, completely rejected by the, you know, the studio system, the big producers, sab kuch likha unhone, straight from the heart, and how he reinvents and repurposes himself in the process of making this film. So. It's a personal journey, it's a personal triumph, it's an autobiographical narrative, deeply inspiring to all of us because we've all faced setbacks and failures. After you read this book, you'll feel enthused and energized to struggle against the odds that you face on a daily basis. The, so that's the first triumph. The second triumph is the making of Buddha in a traffic jam. How he makes the film, you know? and the unexpected sources of support he received from the common people of India, and how he comes to learn about India. And uh, one of the insights of the book is that suppose we became a nation of problem solvers, you know, rather than inefficient people who coexist with problems, we would be number one. So the book is peppered with his own insights about, you know, the state of the nation, as it were. So that's the second triumph. And of course, the third triumph is this fascinating analysis of this problem that plagues us in India. And just this morning, we were in a video conversation, and we were thinking about how we have to wean away the youth from the doctrine of pseudo-revolution. Why do we call it pseudo-revolution? Because these revolutions are non-starters. It was said famously of the French Revolution that the revolution eats up its own children. But no revolution really in the history of humanity, if you define revolution as an armed overthrow of established authority, has actually succeeded. So how to wean away the youth from these ideas, sometimes they are romantic ideas, because the youth is idealistic after all, right? Of pseudo-revolution, and to take them towards the idea of the Indian Renaissance, which is of course 16446 about Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti, that is by a sage called Dirgha Tamas. The name of the sage is Dirgha Tamas. So some people think that he was probably blind. You know? So that's a theory. But in the list of the deities mentioned, Garutman is a deity. So let me read you the translation, Griffith's translation. They call him Indra, Mitra, Varun, Agni. And he is heavenly, nobly winged Garutman. And so it is a Rig Vedic deity which we have forgotten, Garutman. And Garuda we all know as the Vahan of Vishnu. But the idea of Garutman, noble winged deity which is uh, a Pratik, you know, jo parvaz hai, 
जो हमको ऊपर ले जाती है यू नो आर एस्पिरेशन वी रीच द हेवन्स यू नो सो आई विश गरुटमान ऑल द बेस्ट आई होप यू प्रोड्यूस ब्रिलियन बुक्स विच इन्फ्लुएंस पीपल इन इंडिया एंड नाउ लेट मी एंड I was thinking, uh, you know, when Ashok ji was speaking, the importance of this place, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan. He mentioned K. Munshi ji who founded it, but we often forget that K. Munshi ji's teacher was Sri Aurobindo. And I was just thinking of something that Sri Aurobindo said in 1905 when he was teaching in Baroda College. He was vice principal of Baroda College, and he wrote a, a stunning revolutionary pamphlet, revolutionary, but of a different kind, right? the inner revolution we were talking about this today india has stood for the inner revolution and outer evolution so social change has to be gradual evolutionary consensual and pluralistic that was the indian way but the inner revolution you cannot compromise whether you call it swatantra swarajya or different notions of enlightenment which are very different from the western ideas buddha's notion of nirvana so we always in india we stand for the inner revolution and outer evolution anyhow so bhavani mandir was this pamphlet that shorbindo wrote and i want to end with a quotation if i might with your permission from bhavani mandir and shorbindo says for what is a nation what is our mother country it is not a piece of earth not a figure of speech not a fiction of the mind it is a mighty shakti composed of the shaktis of all the millions of units that make up the nation just as bhavani mahisha sur mardini sprang into being from the shakti of all the millions of gods assembled in one mass of force and welded into unity the shakti we call india bhavani bharati is the living unity of the shakti of all these billions of people but she is inactive imprisoned in the magic circle of tamas the self indulgent inertia of ignorance which we have to emerge from and i think that this book is going to inspire us and it is precisely this idea of bhavani bharati that urban naxals want to destroy because they want a weak state which can be manipulated by external powers exploited economically and a fragmented and divided society so this is the uh, the conspiracy or the agenda and they were actually even put a date on it 2025 but i think all of us here i'm sure will strive matlab hum koshish karenge ki unki saazish vifal ho isi shabdon ke sath bahut bahut dhanyawad thank you